Ah, it's a crappy day to be doing a video, but uh, I realised that I've owned the car for a year and I haven't done an update video on my Porsche 911. Well, I've actually owned it for 13 months, one year and one month. And if you have a look uh, here, focus, focus, focus. I've done 13,000 miles, so I'm doing exactly a thousand miles per month, which is pretty much what I expected, which is good. I drive the car not every day, but most days. And I use it just like pretty much any other douchebag Porsche 911 owner would. I, uh, I drive my dogs around, I drive the grillers around, I drive kids around, I move furniture, I lose drag races, <laughs> sometimes my car tries to escape me. It's a pretty normal 911 owning experience. And so far, uh, touch wood, no major problems with this car. Um, unlike a certain other car that I used to own that uh, had many other problems, this car has been trouble free. Uh, I had a couple of little things uh, that were wrong from the factory. This thing here, focus, uh, this button here, which is the voice command, uh, was disabled from the factory, but the uh, dealership got that re-enabled for me, so no big deal. I had some problems with the um, home link system, but I think that was me actually, because they just reset it and then it's worked fine ever since then. And the only other minor, very, very minor problem was I had um, a little piece of leather under here that had come unstuck uh, and they just replaced that whole shelf, so no big deal. But that was all fixed within the first week of me owning the car. Since then, no issues. Well, aside from getting flat tires. So yeah, I've been really pleased with the reliability of this car. Top notch, no problems. And this car, as you probably know, gets a bit of a beating. Um, I, don't, I don't baby this car, I drive it in the snow, I drive it in the wet weather, I drive it all year round and I drive it most days. And I have my dogs in the car um, and there's really been no damage, you know, no damage to the um, no damage to the leather, even though the dogs stand on the leather, the leather's all come up good. Um, this uh, sport text um, fabric is holding up really well and even the bolsters on the seats looking good still. Occasionally, just on the edges here, you might get a little blue from uh, people scraping their jeans on it. But I just put a little bit of leather treatment on it and they come up brand new again. The trick with keeping these bolsters nice is getting into the car by putting your feet first and then jumping in. Then you're not scraping yourself across the bolsters here. Modifications I've done to the car, I think uh, a lot of you probably watched that video where my friend who's got a 4S just like this um, did the, the engine upgrade. You can get over 500 horsepower out of this great engine. And that is a safe and easy upgrade, just a chip upgrade and everyone thinks I should do that. But you know, I'm not, I'm not dying for more power. As I've said in previous videos, this car has almost got too much power, you know, more power. Once you get over the 400 horsepower mark, it, it kind of makes the car less fun because you're not having to drive it as hard. So I'm not, I'm not dying to get um, more power and I'd like having the car stock because I, as you know, I drag race and lose to a lot of more powerful cars. So it's nice having the car stock and it's more than powerful enough as it is. The modifications I have done to the car, if you can see it here, this is a, a dash cam. I've got a dash cam in the front and a dash cam in the back there. Uh, I think everybody should have a dash cam. They're so cheap, so easy to put in and just, you know, if you're in the right and somebody crashes into you, you want that, um, you want that dash cam footage um, to prove that, that you did nothing wrong. The only other major modifications uh, is the radar laser jammer that I put in. I did a separate video on that. I'll put a link up here. And I put a little uh, dodgy card here. It just protects this um, button. Tui stands on this button all the time and locks me out of the car. So I'll just put this here until I can figure out a better solution. She also steps on these buttons and opens the sunroof. And uh, actually that's why the car's kind of looking a little wet because she just opened the sunroof and it's snowing today. The only other add-ons, I've put some um, uh, child protector seats in the back so when the dogs are sitting in the back they're just sitting on those uh, I don't know, stop the car from smelling of dog and less less hairs in the seats and so forth so that works out well and I have the uh, Porsche rubber mats uh, on the floors for when on days like today when it's snowing and I'm trekking snow in and out uh, oh and of course I put the full clear bra over the whole car uh, and for me it, that's an expensive option that was like that's like five thousand dollars or something but for me, very important because I'm driving this car year round and I want to be able to put this car through car washes, wash the underneath, get any salt off. Um, and so I feel safe about putting it through pretty much any car wash uh, with that clear bra. And that clear bra, um, you know, I've, I've done partial clear bras in my previous cars and always regretted not doing the whole car. So the car just always looks perfect. Um, even after a quick wash, it always looks perfect because I'm not damaging the paint in any way. 
the clear bra really is tough. As for the options that I took, you know, this, this car was um, pretty much a do-over. As you know, I had problems with my previous 911. So I, I learned a lot from that car and um, configured this car in a different way. Things that I thought would matter to me. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it's the first car I've ever owned that I think, you know, if, I, if, if this car was written off tomorrow, I, I'd just order it pretty much exactly the same. The only possible change I would make is that I would have liked a paint to sample colour, the green colour on the outside, that, that would just make it more personalised to me. But that was going to take another six months, so I ended up cancelling that. And the, the dark blue that I've got matches so well with the interior, it looks good, it's, it's my taste, I'm happy with it. But yeah, next car, maybe the green colour on the outside. Uh, just to personalize a little bit. Uh, the other main options that I got, uh, which are very very specific to me and I don't expect any, anyone else to have my particular taste. You know, I really love this interior. Um, as I've said before, it's, um, it just lightens up the interior. It looks a little different than this, the black interiors that everyone gets. Matches very well with the, um, with the blue on the outside. And I, I wanted a... Um, and I wanted a, a cloth interior as well, which is this sport text interior, uh, which has stood up very well, breathes very nicely. The only downside to this uh, cloth interior is that it's not compatible with the, uh, the ventilating seats, so you can only get the, the heated seats. Uh, not a big deal, but uh, for people that live in very, very hot climates, I think they'd prefer to have the ventilated seats. Other odd options that I got, Obviously the manual transmission, not, po not a popular option these days, because the PDK is so good. You know, even though I'm a manual transmission guy, I admit the PDK is a better transmission for most people. It's faster, it's more fuel efficient, it's easier to drive, and it really makes the car feel more punchy as well. And every time I drive my friend Kevin's car that's got the PDK, I think, oh, this is so awesome. But, uh, back to my manual, uh, I'd order manual again. Um, you know, it, it's definitely a slower car because of it. But it's just the fun factor of having a manual. Going through the gears, matching the revs, dropping through the gears as you come off the highway. I love it. Um, but obviously not for everyone. Uh, and becoming rare, rarer and rarer. I don't know where, how long they're going to keep manuals in the cars. But yeah, super fun having the manual. And super fun having uh, the rev matching with a Sport Chrono package. Uh, not for everybody, but um, it's the thing that's commented on the most when I let my friends and family drive this car. They come back from driving the car and they go, oh, I love how it matches the revs as I chop down the gears. Everybody mentions that, so I'm glad I got that feature as well. Another unpopular feature, especially here in the US, is the rear wiper. Uh, let me demonstrate. The rear wiper, you just don't see it on 911s here in the US, but in Europe and everywhere else in the world, it's very popular. I like the look of it, and of course, I really like the functionality. Of course, the rear wiper adds 25 horsepower as well. Another expensive option are these Sport Plus seats with the bigger bolsters. Uh, I was sort of tossing up between getting the 4-way Sport Plus and the 18-way, and I think I would have been just as happy with the 4-way. I've driven a few of those, and very, very comfortable seats for a lot less. Uh, the benefit of the 18-way, of course, is you get the, uh, <laughs> the a million adjustments down here. You can adjust the, car, the seat to, to, to anyone's sort of size, so it's the most flexible seats. But, mm, as I said, the 4-ways are pretty nice as well. Uh, and, of course, the 18-ways give you the... The memory options as well which uh, memorizes where the steering wheel is uh, a lot of your settings in the car and of course where the seat is as well in the mirrors and everything else so it's expensive the 18 ways over three thousand um, dollars if you're looking to shave a little bit of money off the, the four-way uh, sport pluses are, are just as comfortable and the big difference as i've said before between the uh, sport pluses and the 14 ways or the two-way non-sport plus is how soft the cushioning is uh, people don't believe me when I say this, but the cushioning is so much softer in these seats. And I know my friend Kevin, who's got that beautiful grey uh, 4S like mine, I think that's the only thing he would change in his car, is he wishes he'd got the 18 ways, because every time he drives my car, he's, oh, these seats are so much more comfortable, and it's just the cushioning. Otherwise, my car is just a little bit personalised to me, like I got the, uh, the leather on the seatbelt outlets here, and I got the leather on the steering wheel here. 
on the steering wheel here. Just little touches like that that are personalized to me that I think most people wouldn't get. Yeah, the way the car looks and the way the car drives, I've got it set up to be more comfortable than most. Uh, I didn't get the lowered suspension and I didn't get the, uh, the sports exhaust and a lot of other popular options that most people get, but it, it suits me. I just love the way this car sounds, the way, I love the way the car drives, and I love that I get to drive this car every day, no matter how crappy the weather is. So that's the update on my car, no real problems, very happy with the configuration. Uh, what about other people's cars? So I know a lot of people with these cars through my channel and personally, um, so I get to hear of any other problems. Uh, a common problem that people have been having is uh, rattling of the rear seat belts. Something in there rattles and it gets replaced um, under warranty. I haven't had that problem. Uh, some people with the PDK transmission have been getting that lurching problem. There's a software update for that. There's been a couple of software updates for the uh, Apple CarPlay, which have fixed most of the problems there. And the only other uh, major problem that I'm aware of is the uh, GTS engine, uh, the, the 450 horsepower engine with the bigger turbos. I know of three people, uh, two friends of mine and one, one of my uh, viewers uh, have contacted me all with exactly the same symptoms. Uh, when they are uh, taking their car, once it's warmed up, past sort of 6,000 RPM, suddenly the, uh, the turbo backs off. They, they suddenly lose all that torque. Problem is, the, the turbos are backing off because they're detecting lack of lubrication. Uh, and what Porsche is doing for these owners is just replacing those turbos. So I'm interested to track this problem, uh, see how bad it is. If you have the 450 horsepower three liter engine, uh, certainly keep an eye out for that uh, issue where the turbochargers start to back off after 6,000 RPM. Um, it doesn't throw up any warning lights or anything, it's just uh, less power at that, that top revs and it's all to do with the uh, turbocharger detecting lack of lubrication. And so Porsche, as I said, have been replacing the turbochargers, which worries me a little bit because I believe they're just replacing them with exactly the same parts again. So will it just happen again? So yeah, I'd like to keep track of that. So anyone else that's got that problem, write to me uh, and maybe we'll do a separate video on that at a, at a later date. But otherwise, super happy with my little car. I expect to hold on to it for another couple of years yet. Uh, we'll see what uh, new fangled toys come out with the 992, but I don't expect to see the, uh, the 4S for a couple of years anyway. Um, and otherwise, uh, yeah, I just, I just love this car and have a real emotional attachment to it. So I suspect I'm gonna hold on to it for a while um, and continue to lose many drag races in it. Anyway, we're gonna go out and do some, uh, have some fun in the snow and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye then.